Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. And it is that time of the day, that time of the month, that time of the show. And she, the here door. she comes. Get Let out me of get the way, door. Ron. Let me get the Ron, door. Ron, would you move? Yes. Ron, quit. Get out of the way, Ron. Ron, don't turn the light out. Come on, let her, let her come on in here. We know who that is. You folks that listen to this show know that that is only the only person. It's Marty Marbury, West Tennessee Tourism, TNVacation.org. Absolutely, and I am so ready for spring. Uh, I'm doing my spring happy dance. Well, that's what I thought you were. It looked like it was a new step that you had right there, you know. Uh, it's the spring happy dance. Oh, uh, well, the dogwoods are blooming, the crappie are spawning, and, and why am I talking to you? I need to be out someplace. <laughs> that's right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Ron's even there. It, it's not. Uh, he's it. not. It's his aura. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, oh, wow. whoa. <laughs> Bill is in he, rare form. He this sure morning. is. I'm glad Ron's sitting on the other side of the yeah, room. No kidding, me too. And Greg's got on his Blackhawk outfit. <laughs> oh, wow. We may have to have uh, Dave Marty. Brown in here pretty soon. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking. Hey. But you know what? Yeah. It is spring, and I don't think I've had any crappies. And Uh-oh. I see Ron and you eating it all the time. Oh, uh, well, it's, uh, you know. Marty, no, I, Marty, I will get you some coffee. Okay. See, what, yeah. You know what? You're my favorite. There you go. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> he knew that. Hey, I know. Hey, lots of things going on right now. I know we're, we're yeah, before before we know it, it'll be Memphis in May, and, we, and we're and we going to be talking a little oh, bit later, uh, Marty, about the, the grand opening of the uh, Bass Pro Bass Shops at the Pro. Pyramid. We're going to be. We're gonna, what yeah. everybody's talking about. Yeah, but I know there's a lot of things. Spring is a great time in uh, in West Tennessee because uh, the flowers are blooming. Uh, everything is green. Uh, the, you bet. The, and you, you know what? Talk about flowers blooming. Yeah. What's going on? The 25th. It's the 24th and the 25th. But today, you yeah. get the Dixon Garden Fair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You it, know what? If you've not attended, I've been you there. have got to attend this gardening event that started yesterday and it's going on today at the Absolutely. dixon gardens over fifteen thousand plants and what i love about it they focus on rare and unusual varieties oh, you know okay. it's not the stuff you find at home depot and lowe's oh you threw in that those two words again i thought it's kind of like sonic where they have so many milkshakes it, you know it, so it, <laughs> you know, this year, they're also going to have an expanded herbs and ferns selection. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hours are 9 to 4. 9 to 4 and, today. Okay. Yeah, you can even get your gardening questions answered by the Dixon Garden staff. I'm writing it down. Um, okay. And some local experts. All right. We've got this weekend, Tyler Perry's Medea on the Run at the Orpheum. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Everybody's favorite grandmother, Medea's in town. <laughs> she All is. Right. I, I saw you pictured with her. I mean, did uh, you see my picture? Yeah, I did. Everybody said that was my Medea face. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> the 26th is the Bill Street Wine Race. Come down and watch some area restaurants battle it out. That's a something and to see. Yeah. Have you ever been there, Larry? Uh, no. Beale Street? Yeah, I've been to Beale Street. Well, I, I, but the I, wine I, race? No, no, I've amazing. been I've been to the I've been to the wine race before, you know, but uh, <laughs> he won it last count. Wednesday. That I did. doesn't count. You've got to go to see the great stomp. It's a the best. what? The great and oh, it's oh, the, the event okay. that traditionally kicks off the Memphis and May season. April the thirtieth, it is Jackson general season starting in Jackson, Tennessee. That's April thirtieth, okay. All right. Yes, that is the thirtieth. Uh, May the first at Carriage Crossing in Collierville. Yeah. They are starting a new uh movie mania. Oh, really? And it is a Great family event. They're kicking it off with planes, fire, and rescue. Oh, somebody told me. Somebody and big boy. Somebody told me it's going to be the Rocky. Go see that. No, they told me it's going to be the Rocky Horror Show. That's what I was worried about. That that was the rumors, you know. No, no, no. Uh, okay, no, no, no. all right, all right. And also starting on May first, I love this. Yep. They're going to host 
a farmer's market. Oh, yeah. Carriage Crossing and Collierville. Oh, okay. All right, that's on my it's list. It's going to be great. Okay. Memphis, 1st through the 3rd, Memphis in May, Bill Street Music Fest. Yep, yep that's it. Yep. It, that's it. This yep. month long salute to Panama starts with the Funfield Music Extravaganza. It's going to have over 70 acts across three days and four stages. Panama, right? Crazy. Panama. 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 Okay. May the 7th is the 36th Annual Blues Music Awards at the Cook Convention Center. Oh. It's a showcase of the best blues performers from around the world. Blues. May 8th and 9th. I know I'll see Ron at this event. It is the Memphis Greek Food Festival. I'll be there. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, think there. Ron eats more than me. Yeah. No. That's kind of hard to do. Yeah, well, we're not, uh, we're, we're no, just move on, not. Marty. You're cutting into <laughs> Steve's time now because you're starting getting on food now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Greek Festival is a two-day festival offering a unique opportunity to take in the sights and sounds of Greece. It influenced much of our civilization, and you know what I love? They do sanctuary tours. Sanctuary a, tours? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. May 14th through the 16th, I don't even have to tell you about this. Memphis and May Barbecue Cooking Contest. Really? They have that every year, don't they? Yeah, I think they Every <laughs> year, hundreds of teams come to town to compete for cash yeah. and the bragging rights. Yeah. Poor little pigs. All right, go ahead. You know, you go downtown, and it's permeated with the smell of barbecue. Permeated? We never used that word before. In May. <laughs> Let me look permeated. that up. What was that? Let permeated. me look that permeated. up. Permeated. <laughs> uh, I thought that was exterminated. I'm on dictionary.com. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Marty still it to us. You know, there's so much more to do. And where do they it's go to find it? It's a great out? time to be in Tennessee. Go to tnvacation.com. And find out what you're going to be doing this weekend and all summer long. Marty, Marty. we love you, girl. You're going out of the room and stuff. Don't eat too much. All right, Marty. We'll talk to you. Have a good one. There she goes. Bye. There she Bye. goes. Uh, Marty Marbury dances out of the room. And as she dances out of the room, we go straight to the lake. It's a hard act to follow for Steve McAdams to have to follow Marty But Marbury. he can do it. But but he can do it. He's Steve has the crappie she was wanting. Yes, yes Steve. That's we right. hope he's got crappie this morning on this Saturday morning. Good morning, Steve McAdams. Hey, Larry. Good morning to you. I know you're on the bike. I can hear the wind howling and you're on the lake. But, uh, yes. If you're tell in it. charge of wind, I wish you'd turn the switch off. No, it's <laughs> Ron Wong is in charge of that. Uh, uh, I know who to blame. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, well, what's what's happening at Kentucky Lake crappie well, wise? We we're a little bit above normal on lake levels. We've been fighting a lot of uh, unstable conditions this week, Larry. It's yeah. been the, we're about two and a half feet above normal, and uh, it's been a colder week than normal. We've had the high winds and high water and low temperatures, so that combination made it a little tough this week. We, we were doing pretty good up the last two or three days, and things have backed off quite a bit with this cold front and high water. So it, it's already crested. It's going to start back down slowly, but we've got a ways to go. Well, I know, Steve, that uh, we're, we're, we're in end of April, so uh, – <laughs> Uh, tell our listeners out there a little bit about uh, any techniques you ch- have to change in this time of the year. Yeah, you know, we're kind of a postponed phase here already. Our fish right. started spawning, you know, about 10 days ago, and it's really hard to see much of a peak here with the unstable conditions that we've had a little bit lately. We had a surge last week for about five, six, seven days, and pretty big numbers hit, and then it's fallen off dramatically the last few days. That's not unusual when the postponed periods from the slack up a little bit, but when you get the high water and the cold front and uh, a lot of wind to go with it, it's made it a kind of a triple whammy for us, you might say. And the fish are real sluggish. They're not wanting to aggressively take a bait, and they're scattered. They're not staying around the cover like they should be. You know, usually they're relating real tight to a steak bed or a brush pile. And right now they're a little bit confused. They're roaming a little bit. But something else is on the verge of happening. Our bluegill are on the verge of bed here in the next yeah, week. So yeah. the property kind of handed off to the bluegill here about this time of year. So that's about to happen. You know, you guys had a tournament up there recently, Steve, and I saw where over a three-pound crappie was uh, weighed in at the tournament. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, we, we just talked to a guy earlier, a young man earlier, that uh, wired to fish, and they had a survey of trophy-sized crappie and uh, listed the top ten, and five of them were from Mississippi. I, I, you know, and, and Ron will verify this as we listen to your win there, that uh, the, the, there, there are some – 
there's nothing wrong with Kentucky Lake for a big crappie, no, is there? Oh, that's for sure. We've had some good ones through the years. Mississippi probably is the top when it comes to three pound plus fish. We always have a few taken here every year, and we've had four or five this spring here right through this area. But uh-huh. mm-hmm. it takes a big one away with three pounds when you put him on the scale, he'll humble you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. right. But you know, Kentucky Lake, uh, what makes it just a little bit different than the lakes we were talking about earlier, it has a little bit shorter growing season. Mm-hmm than those uh, down in uh, Mississippi. But, uh, well, it's moving but, water. But I, mean, I will tell you, Kentucky Lake, for numbers of good yes, crop, you know, yeah. I'm talking, you know, over 12 inches, uh, great lake. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been I've been in the boat with Steve before. and, uh, uh, and, and Well, he hasn't asked me yet, so. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a difference between steak beds and S-T-E-A-K. I mean, I know you get your steaks mixed up on that and everything. And and Steve's, I I know Steve is, uh, he and Jim Perry share about eighteen thousand steak beds up there. I think oh, so. Oh, that a while to cover out, you know. Over the years, a lake like Kentucky Lake, when it's gotten older, you know, you lost some of the natural habitat. So anglers up here have learned to re- refurbish the lake and put out those man-made fish tractors. It's been, uh, it's been a kind of an ace in the hole, so to speak. And put them at a lot of different depths, put them up for bass too, but. Uh, you know, you're just putting a lot of cover back in the lake where there used to be a natural stump, natural cover, or it disappeared. We've learned to put it back in there and refurbish everything, and it pays dividends. Well, we need to get you now that we've moved Gaston to April out of March. Maybe we can get you back up to Gaston's. Uh, and uh, you, you need a break sometimes, right? I mean, uh, you're you're only on the water, what, seven or eight days a oh, year? Six, about six days a week. I let them rest <laughs> on Sunday, but I'm fighting them six days a week. Yeah, we're going to get you back up to Gaston so you can have a break and get out of that sun for a while. You're okay. right. I need to get back over there with you guys. Such a good trip. Always a great trip over there. Yeah, buddy, we appreciate you. Tell them how to get in touch with you. Uh, so some booking, some guide service. Thanks. To, yes, absolutely. SteveMcAdams.com at my website is the best way to reach me. And give me an email anytime. I'll keep of course, keep posting the reports on your website there, and let me yes. know if I can help you listen. Yeah, you can go to lroutdoors.com. Steve has one of the most uh, comprehensive web uh, fishing reports. Yes, he does. That you do, yeah. and, I, and I know that uh, a lot of folks lean on that. But uh, thank you, buddy. Be careful up there. Okay. And tell everybody hello, hello, and uh, if you see a Jim Perry sighting, Good to let be me with know. You guys, Ron, and Ron, you turn the wind off, buddy. Okay. All right, I'll do that right now. <laughs> All right, uh, see you, buddies. Steve McAdams, uh, one of the great guys. One uh, of the good guys. Been doing it a long time. Yeah. Buddy, you talk about a, a, a long time on the water. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if you really want to go out, uh, he can definitely put you on the fish. And yes, no he matter can. what the conditions are, yeah. he'll figure it out. He, he stays on crappie on that lake all year. All year. And, you know, based on weather conditions and everything, it can change from day to day. Mm-hmm. But he can adapt so well. And, and well, when you know where they went to bed last night, yeah. even when conditions change, you're probably going to get pretty close to where they wake up the next morning. Well, he, he'll know where to go. That's right. Well, let me, uh, you know, as we close out this segment, I do want to uh, toss in a little word right here since we're talking fishing that the Mid-South lost two of their legendary oh, people I, here recently with the passing that. of Dan Barry of the Barry Brothers. uh mm-hmm. Uh, great guy, Dan has taught more people how to cast uh, the, the flower. Uh, he's just a wonderful guy, and, and our condolences go out to his brother John and all the family. And then, of course, uh, the legendary Scatter Wallace, Wayne Scatter Wallace, out of yep. uh, Pickwick and Adamsville, uh, fished many times with Scatter. I can, uh, and I got more uh, comments probably on the story that I did this past week uh, on the commercial appeal about those two guys because. Uh, uh, just two legends, and uh, they they will be missed but not forgotten. They have uh, touched the lives of a lot of people uh, in fishing, and I know Bill knows that too. Yeah, does, absolutely, uh, particularly. So anyway, let's take a break. Come right back, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more. And we were hoping to get James Powell of DU in here, but uh, there's been some interstate problems, so uh, we'll see. We'll be right back on Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. 